Hello friends, so I'm back again today with one of my daily updates and I want to talk to you about jihad, like I mentioned in my last message uh, Friday. I think it's important that we kind of understand the seriousness of the fact that according to the Bible in the book of Revelation, the beast declares war against the saints and declares war against the Lamb of God. But how is this going to look like, friends? What institution today in our world is already prepared and has ready a doctrine of war in order for that event to come to pass? Islam does. But before I go there, let me quickly share this news that came out yesterday. A judge rules against Temple Mount Ban for Jewish youth caught praying there. This judge voted in favour of the young Jewish boys who were found proclaiming the Shema on the Temple Mount. Such a simple prayer uttered by these young Jewish guys is now another cause for contention in Israel. In a near unprecedented decision, the Jerusalem Magistrate, Magistrates Court ruled Monday in favour of three Jewish teenagers who were temporarily barred from the Temple Mount compound in Jerusalem after they bowed down and recited the Shema Israel prayer at the Flashpoint site. By praying at the site, the teenagers violated a long-standing but informal arrangement known as the status quo, which dictates that Jews are allowed to visit the site but not pray there. That is the norm on the Temple Mount. Like I said many times, who controls Jerusalem? Who's in charge of the Temple Mount, friends? It's not Israel. Israel is certainly not a Jewish state. That has no control over its own holy site, the Temple Mount. This is all according to God's purposes, friends. You can read the headlines if you like. The United Nations talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This is United Nations website. It's a very long article and I will link it under this video when I'm done. Status quo of Jerusalem's holy sites must be upheld, Special Middle East Coordinator tells Security Council as speakers express alarm over recent violent clashes. The world is appeasing Islam, you guys. I see no evidence of the revival of the Roman Empire, but I do see evidence of a revival of the Islamic Khilafah or the Caliphate. The status quo in Jerusalem's holy sites must be upheld at all costs, speakers told the Security Council today following the recent clashes between Palestinians and Israeli security forces at Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount during religious holidays. If you want, I will put this in the description so you can read and I, I really encourage you to read it. Read, read the details, friends, of what's been said here. All sides must do their part to reduce tensions, uphold the status quo, there goes that word again, which was what? That Jews can visit the site but are forbidden from praying on the site. Why is that? Because only Muslims and only Islam has that right, according to the agreed status quo. Appeasement of Islam. But one day, eventually, we know through the scriptures, friends, <clears throat> that this place is going to be invaded by the Antichrist beast. And the method of jihad is what's going to be used. This is my understanding of it, and I'm going to share with you some more information. Just bear with me. Let me read a little bit more of this. And ensure this sanctity is respected by all, he said, welcoming statements by senior Israeli officials reiterating Israel's commitment to upholding the status quo, so ridiculous, this, this whole situation is lunacy, and ensuring that only Muslims will be allowed to pray on the holy esplanade, Israeli officials 
uphold their commitment to upholding this status quo, to ensure that only Muslims will be allowed to pray on this holy site. This article, which I will also link, because I'm not going to go through it all right now, for your benefit. This was written in 2018 by a Muslim, an Arab, Muhammad Mukta Kandil. How terrorist groups use Jerusalem successfully, I would add, <clears throat> in their campaign, in their pro-Palestinian campaign to liberate Al-Quds, to liberate Palestine. I have a few words for America and its people. I swear by God Almighty, who has raised the sky without pillars, America and anyone who lives there will never dream of security unless we have it in reality in Palestine and until all infidel armies leave the land of Muhammad. God is great and glory be to Islam. He introduces his article by quoting the late words of Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden in 2001, only days after the 9-11 attacks, when he threatened the US using the Palestinian issue as a pretext and justification for his threats. But this article goes into more detail about why this place is used as the bait in order to garner world sympathy for the cause of liberating Israel for the Palestinian cause. Now, let's move along quickly. In Revelation chapter 12, we've read this many times about this event that takes place and it's still in the future. And war broke out in heaven, verse 7, Revelation 12, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was the place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, if we continue to read on. It's mentioned here. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time and that short time is 42 months. Verse 13, now when the dragon saw he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. The woman here is not Mother Mary. This woman here is symbolic of Israel, who gives birth to the Messiah, the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed out his out spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood now let's scroll on and focus what it says here and verse 17 and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ Chapter 13, the nature of this war, I believe, fits in line with the Islamic doctrine of jihad. This is how it's going to happen, friends. We read this scripture many times. Let's continue. Then I stood in the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Here we go with the seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns. And on his head's a blasphemous name. At verse 4, it reads, So they worshipped the dragon who gives authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, Notice what this scripture here says in Revelation 17. Speaking of Babylon the Great. And now, scrolling down. Verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet. 
but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. I'm scrolling because I want to focus on something specific, but I always ask you to please read these scriptures in their context, right? Let's read that again. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called chosen faithful. Now this one mind, I believe, is the unity in Islam, the Ummah. This doctrine of the oneness of Allah, this unity of their faith, which will bring the ten kings together, who will have one mind, they come together in unity to give their very power and authority that they'd only just received to the beast. Why is that? Verse 14. These will make war with the Lamb. This scripture is telling me this unity, this coming together of the ten kings is a military unity, a consolidation of military strength in order to make a war jihad against the lord jesus christ now stay with me there's a manual in the islamic world called reliance of the traveler or in other words tools for the worshiper this is a manual a classical manual of islamic sacred law by Ahmad ibn Naqib al-Mizri, who died in the year 1368 AD. It's edited now, translated in English by this sheikh, Nuha im Kella. I've got a video clip, I want to get to that, but let me read a little bit of the introduction of this. Sacred knowledge contents, the knowledge of good and bad. Where have we heard that language before, friends? Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. The very tree of the knowledge of good and evil that the Lord God had forbidden Adam and Eve from eating the fruit of. The knowledge of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I find it interesting that in the very opening of this manual it reads Contents, knowledge of good and bad. I will put this in the description also for your further reading. You can see how vast the volume is. It's 336 pages. This video clip that I want to share with you, I'll play it for about seven minutes so you understand that this doctrine of jihad, the Islamic doctrine of jihad, friends, is taken very seriously in the Islamic world. They already have, like I said, a system in place for when this time comes, when the beast comprising of these 10 kings who are united and been given one mind is going to materialize. This image that I have here, I've shared it with you many times before, is Islamic artwork depicting the Mahdi in the middle and on the left in white is the Islamic Isa, the fake Jesus, who's coming after the Mahdi shows up. Clearly illustrating <clears throat> that this campaign to liberate Israel from the zionists like they say is going to further the agenda of the beast ethnic cleansing this is pro-palestinian artwork as you can see ethnic cleansing with that spray bottle backed by the us it says it's always been genocide so this is going to become more 
popular as the days go by. Notice this language. <clears throat> All united for free Palestine. All united. Just the, the same kind of language that we just read in the book of Revelation. Another article. But before I go there, let me play to you that clip now that I have. This is a clip taken from this man's channel, Sheikh Omar Baloch. He's American, Muslim. I'm not sure what state he's in, in the USA. But listen to what he says. He actually has a playlist teaching his audience about the doctrine of jihad, the rules of engagement. I'm going to play up to seven minutes. It's three and a half hours long. You can watch the rest of it in your own time. Check this out. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Because uh, of many reasons, including the fact that there is a big chance that nations, nation states will fall, and we will be in a place where we have to defend ourselves, and also because when we're looking at issues of our history, uh, and just knowing the rules of engagement in Islam is generally a good thing. So we will be going over the fiqh of the jihad as it is in our books of fiqh and for this I will be using two sources uh, for now uh, this will be a very dry discussion this is not you know this is this is an uh, this is a dry discussion for those people that want to know and, and every people in every city should know these rules and also there is a lot of academic uh, there's a lot of points that are Im important interesting that come out of these uh, discussions. So these are long discussions, they're relatively boring, uh, but they are important. So if somebody takes the time to, and you know, I'll try to make it less boring, but uh, reading, uh, I will be using English, uh, but I'll be using classical texts. Uh, for Umdatu Salik, the English and Arabic are side by side. Uh, for Umdatu Salik, the other thing I would say is that I, I start off with Imam Shafi's fiqh and then go to Ibn Rushd from Badayatul Mujtahid. Uh, I use Umdatu Salik from Imam Shafi because Shafi's have, in my opinion. Uh, I'm pausing it there so you understand that the captions in this video, being in English, are a bit mumble jumbled because he's continuing to use Arabic language. So the captions are a bit off, just to let you know. When he talks about fiqh, that word, it just means simply the Islamic law, Islamic jurisprudence, right? And the source, one of the sources that he cites in this presentation is what I just showed you. The manual called Reliance of the Traveller. Now, for further understanding on this subject matter, I will refer you to Brother Lloyd de John. Look up his channel. He's talked about this in in great detail. Let me continue playing this clip. My feeling, my opinion after, you know, when you generally they have the strictest opinion when it comes to Kitab al-Jihad or this Fasl al-Jihad. In, in the topic of Jihad, they have the toughest opinions amongst the fuqaha and uh, so that's why I'm going to start off with uh, reading off from Umdat al-Salik and then after that we will go to Badayat al-Mujtahid and that will be and that will have other details there that are not in Umdat al-Salik okay uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim here we go uh, uh, now this is the actual copy that can be found as a PDF format online you can download the whole thing for your own study reasons and to understand, friends, I really believe this is the method, the manner in which Jerusalem will be invaded in the future. We know through the scriptures, in the book of Zechariah and in the book of Joel, that this land and this city, Jerusalem, will be under attack. And it's coming from the surrounding nations, it's coming from the Islamic world. But now we have insight as to how they will practically do this, friends. And unfortunately, I believe many who live in the Western world who hold to these Islamic beliefs are potentially a threat in the West. Now, we are called 
to be faithful until the end, right? We must endure all things and we must go through tribulation. That's another day's message, I, even though I have spoken about that before. Let me continue because I don't really want to keep this video very long. I'm going to play him until seven minutes and then I'm coming back, so don't go anywhere. That means war. Now, over here I want to mention when, uh, you know, the thing that the West has made famous is the word uh, jihad. But war in Quran is qital. Okay. And fight in the path of those who fight against you. So actually, war is qital. Okay. Or qital is also means to fight. Okay. So fight and war uh, have similar, similar word. Jihad means war against non Muslims. فَهُوَ قِتَالُ الْكُفَّارِ وَجِهَادْ مَعْهُدْ مِنَ الْمُجَاحِدَةِ And uh, the word jihad is uh, etymologically derived from the word mujahada, signifying warfare to establish the deen. This is a very important point that uh, the purpose of jihad is to establish the deen, okay? establish the sharia. And that means the five maqasid, okay? the protection of life for all, the protection of the deen for all, the protection of everyone's wealth, just like the Prophet said in Hujat al Wudah, that your lives and your wealth and your honor is protected on this day, on this month, you know, as this month is, just as sacred as this month is and this place is. Yani. So, anyway, uh, so to protect the aql of the people, this is why alcohol is not allowed, gambling is not allowed, because it plays with the aql of the people, and to play uh, and to protect the sulm, the, uh, the, uh, the ancestry and the the progeny and the genes of people okay it has to be clear to a child who's your father and so on and so forth it's, and this also goes into issues of genetic manipulation which shaitan wants to do okay it is uh, signifying warfare to establish the deen so the purpose is to establish islam to establish the peace establish the model of justice for all people to see okay and that's why you'll notice this is under the chap jihad is under the chapter of jihad uh, justice in uh, Umdat Salih. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, and it is a less it is a lesser jihad, meaning jihad is, that is qital to establish a deen is the lesser jihad. As for the greater jihad, it is spiritual warfare against the self, which is why the Prophet sallallahu has said that we have returned from a lesser jihad to a greater jihad. Uh, even though this hadith is weak, but in some ways it is uh, it is true in its meaning, meaning uh, that uh, you have to have good individuals that will, you know, if you're establishing the deen, you have to have good individuals. So good individuals need to fight that are honest, that are just, that are not going to take revenge because others made them victims. They're able to forgive and they're ha they're able to be like the Sahaba. So they have to fight themselves before they can even deal with the jama'ah where you know there's stress and and then sometimes you don't like what the emir said and sometimes you know things happen where you have to fight against yourself okay and you have to forgive and let go for the bigger cause okay the scriptural basis for jihad prior to the scholarly consensus is the quranic verse kutiba alaykumul qital allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said kutiba alaykumul qital which means fighting kutiba means it's written, it's ordained, it is prescribed, it is fought. Kutiba alaykum al qital. Okay, uh, qital has been ordained for you. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, slay them wherever you find them. And this is where you know uh, you will find uh, this verse. Uh, slay them wherever you find them uh, is about once the battle has already uh, begun okay and so uh, and then uh, Allah says قَاتِلُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ and uh, fight the mushrikeen okay so again uh, this is in case where the battle has begun and then you have to fight them and the hadith on the one related to Bukhari and Muslim in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I have been commanded to fight people until they testify there is no God but Allah and His Messenger perform the prayers, pay the zakat 
if they say it, they have saved their blood and possessions for me except for the rights of Islam over them and their final reckoning is with Allah. Now over here is something important. Again, I'm going to put this video in the description so you can watch the rest of it. Now, you heard from the horse's mouth, very calm, very cavalier, how he spoke about the doctrine of jihad. There's a whole manual on it again. Why? This is Islamic jurisprudence. This is law, Sharia law. So, <clears throat> Jihad for Jerusalem 2021 had the media facilitated the de de legitimization of Israel. Oh, some mornings, honestly. I'm reading this article briefly to show you when this author wrote this he understood the seriousness of the jihad doctrine i will put this in the description also i need to move on nowhere does history repeat itself more often than in jerusalem and israel but far too many journalists covering events in the region are ignorant of the patterns Rather than delving into the issues on which they report, they dismiss history, preferring to parrot the simplistic, propagandistic lines they hear in their echo chamber. The result is a distorted media narrative of Palestinian grievances and Israeli fought that is promoted by and further promotes an extremist, anti-Zionist ideology that seeks the elimination of a Jewish state. Like I said before, this cause for Palestine is what's going to further the agenda before the beast rises. This is their goal, friends, and we understand that it's going to get worse before it gets better. The only time it's going to get better is when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. This zealous followers of Muhammad are not going to leave Jerusalem alone until the kingdom of Christ is here. Go back to the book of Daniel in chapter 2, refocus on those scriptures and remind yourselves that when the Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom comes, he comes and he destroys the beast. He brings the whole empire down and then he sets up his kingdom, right? Now, there's that manual. Wikipedia says, Reliance of the Traveller <clears throat> is a classical manual of fiqh for the Shafi school of Islamic jurisprudence. Fiqh, just so you understand, is an Islamic jurisprudence word. Fiqh is often described as a human understanding and practices of the Sharia, that is, human understanding of the divine Islamic law as revealed in the Quran and the Sunnah, which are the teachings and practices of the Islamic Prophet Muhammad and his companions, right? So this is whole system designed, friends. I'm going to say it. Inspired by the dragon to fulfill end time purposes. And remember, the Lord is in control. Now, currently, this was taken in August 2021. Take a look at the situation where things look worst when we're talking about terrorism around the world. And one of the foundations of this terroristic ideological basis is jihad, the doctrine of jihad. You notice when we look at these regions, the dark reds are where it's very extreme terrorism activity. And then severe in the lighter shade and so forth, right? Now, Israel, meanwhile, is holding meetings with the Arabs in the south, Abraham Accords. The Pope and the Imam, the Mufti of Egypt, got together and created Abrahamic house in the UAE. Because they believe that the future is in unity and working together. But this group are very zealous to oppose those initiatives. 
and instead want to wage war against those who go against the teachings of Islam. And one of those core beliefs is the liberation of all goods. But we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to win this war. This is what is at the heart of it. Now this graphic, this imagery helps me to illustrate to you the intensity of this battle, friends. This dragon, when he's cast out, will make war, will do jihad against Israel and all those who believe in Jesus Christ. Some more scriptures I think is important for us to look at. In Revelation 19, I want us to go to when the Lord Jesus comes. I've read this many times. He comes to judge and to make war, right? Let's go on. He comes on that glorious white horse with a sharp sword. He has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, when we scroll down to verse 19, Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth. Those same kings read where I read to you from in Revelation chapter 13, who get together, who've been given no power or authority, but they unite together for one hour with the beast, right? And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies. How often do we look over these words? And think, oh, you know. And their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. But the Lord Jesus does something wonderful. Then the beast was captured. This figure, the Mahdi, this could be him. And with him, the false prophet. It could be Isa, the Islamic Jesus who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. This time is going to be very violent, friends. In the book of Zechariah, I just read from it recently, but in case I've got new listeners and they're wondering where am I going with all of this, in the book of Zechariah, to show you how much the Lord is in control, it reads here, the day of the Lord. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming and your spoil will be divided in your midst, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. What are the nations that are going to battle against Jerusalem? What are the nations that want to liberate this place and declare it Islamic today? The city shall be taken. So we know is coming an invasion of Jerusalem. The house is rifled, the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle, which is what the book of Revelation was just speaking of. John saw events that have already been described to us in the books of the Old Testament. And in that day, his feet would stand in the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. The Lord's physical presence is going to be in the land and he's going to defend Jerusalem. These jihadic armies, jihadists, Joel chapter 3 shows us. Let's scroll down to verse 12. Please read these in their context. The Lord says here, let the nations be wakened. Now we know what nations the Lord is talking to us about, friends. It's the one and only the Islamic nations. The only group of nations that want to liberate the land. I know I'm keep, I keep repeating myself, but I think this repetition is important so it sinks in. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. 
Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Where is Zion? What is Zion? Jerusalem. This word is used interchangeably. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy because by then the Lord Jesus Christ would have destroyed the Islamic jihadists and their armies who came against it. And no aliens shall ever pass through her again. Let's read that one more time. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then, and only then, friends, will Jerusalem be holy. And no aliens shall ever pass through her again. Hallelujah. Glorious. So we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to win this battle. The one mind of the ten kings of the beast who are uniting for this one cause, friends, to make war against the harlot and Jesus Christ and his followers. It's the dragon who empowers the beast with authority and gives him a throne. The beast and its kingdom make a proclamation. Who can make war against him? There is blasphemy and this entity is allowed to continue its war against the saints, friends, for 42 months. Nations are gathered against Jerusalem for battle Half of the city will be taken. It's coming invasion, friends. But the Lord Jesus Christ has already declared to us the end from the beginning. Now, I'll be back again soon. I want you to remember that when these groups start to continue their campaign and ramp it up a notch, we know the time of the Lord's return is going to be drawing nearer until they make this proclamation against Israel. Now, before I continue, there's so much more. Please be back again tomorrow as I continue with my daily updates. I'm still working on my message, but I'm thinking I want to share with you about the Tower of Babel and Neo-Babylon. This, what you're seeing here, is Babylon revived. The language is the same it's about unity it's all coming together friends i hope that all makes sense to you i'll be back again soon please share this message